I never thought of leaving school. I always thought I'd stay at school the rest of my life, but uh, it didn't make no. I think everybody would like to go around the world, but a lot of people dream about it, a lot of people think about it. Only about a dozen, the most, do it like now. I mean, you've got to work. It's the only thing to get money, you've got to live, haven't you? So you've got to work. My teachers and the police taught me that work was something that we owed to God. But a good job, I, where, I, where I think about it, is one that you know, you're willing to get up the next morning to go to it like that. I left school on the Friday and I went off the job on the Friday and started on the Monday. I'm Linda Pruden, I'm 19 and I work in Henderson's on display, window dressing. Mr Rennie and the store manager decide what stock is going in what windows on what particular days, you know. We are responsible for those windows, how they end up. It's up to us what accessories we use. Because you get, like, um, a middle-aged dress on a model and it'll just look nothing. But if you put um, a decent scarf with it, a decent handbag, you know, it makes it look something, doesn't it? I just didn't like school at all. And I left there when I was 15. And yes, when I came to Henderson's, they sent me to college. It entails all about designing windows, colour, lighting, and designing the window itself. And I've got these gold ones. It's from Gala. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you can just wander around all day, but in a way you can because even though you're doing your job, you're wandering around, you know, you're using your own imagination. I might leave um, Liverpool altogether and go somewhere else. I like to think I was abroad somewhere. I always wanted to be a missionary. <laughs> you see, I go from one extreme to the other. Either a missionary or an air hostess or something wild like that, you know. I'm not really sure in my mind what I want to do yet. I'm unsettled. I'd never work on the line, really. Not that lots of the men on the line haven't got, you know, good qualifications, but uh, I wouldn't work on the line because it's too boring. I'd like a better change in my job, you know. The type of job I'm doing, it's so consistent, you know, you're doing the same thing all the time. It does dull the faculties, in other words, where it takes some people 20 minutes to do a crossword, it'd take me 40 minutes. It slows you up quite considerably, you know, mentally, like. The same man I know has worked on the same machine and the same position for the past two years doing the same job. And all he does is lay a piece of cloth over the foam and run it through a sewing machine. And if he's done that for the past two years, I don't think he deserves a medal. I want security, and the only way I could get security was to earn more money. Many people say money's not everything, but I think it is. You've got to scrape it so that it comes off in one piece. It's no good just trying to rub it off like that. You can rub it off with anything. You must try and get the scraper so the scraper goes in and takes the cut off. See the way that cut is left? My name's John O'Rourke, like, and the racing half, craft apprentice. person comes in, usually, usually age is about 16. You take home about nine pounds, I'd like have to have stoppage usually. And I take home 11 pound now, until you, you know, you're 21, and then you're on 20 pound. I would recommend a lad, 
if he wants to be an engineer. If he just wants to do sky, he's going to dislike the job, he's going to be put off engineering. You know, you've got to put your, your mind to it, otherwise, you know, it's just not good. grammar school. I fancy being a designer once or a woodwork teacher. I fancied that one. I don't know. I like being outside and doing I like driving tractors, like machinery. I hope to be a farmer one day, you know. Well, approximately 20 years ago, the main power on farms was horses. Now we've come onto all these modern tractors and we maintain the machine is only as good as the operator. Not as he requires a very high standard of schooling, but he wants to be very intelligent. We are looking for this sharper kind of person. Once you've been to a college, you learn a lot of things that you'd never learn now, you know. The background and why you do things, you know. Like it's a, a three-year course. Uh, two years are in the college itself and one year out of the college, you know. And as regards the financial aspect, working on the farm, it, uh, wages can be quite good to the efficient operator. Well, you're your own boss, but uh, that's not really everything, is it? As long as you enjoy what you're doing, that's the main thing, I think, really. Well, if you're a whole farm, you can, like, design your farm around yourself a bit, can't you? It's interesting, particularly if you know why you're doing things. I don't think we're going in the right direction. These sprays, fungicides, pesticides that we use, this factory farming. Actually, I think it's de they're defeating their object by doing it. On the disease angle, it's much greater. The risk is greater where you get these intensive units. Yeah. It's a great thing to work with nature and not against it. And to, uh, to achieve what you've set out to do. All in the one twelve months from planting to harvesting. It's a wonderful thing. Um, my name's Veronica Smith. I'm age 16. I like the bra factory a lot, but you've know, been stuck in a factory waiting day after day all the time, never coming up in the world yourself. Nobody likes that. Nobody thinks of that. If you think of that, you just give up altogether. I, I work where I work for the money. People say factories are like for the scum and that, but you can't get better money. I'd like not to be able to go out to work as if there was other things to do, but there isn't, is there? There's nothing. I mean, why, do, why can't you just go out and earn a couple of quid? You might as well and just sit around doing
say generally speaking in this country a worker doesn't get satisfaction from his work I think he should do in a type of place where I work very few people see the finished product yeah I think you've definitely got to get satisfaction out of your job uh, mm. the job that I do window dressing well I see satisfaction because well at the end of the day you see the window done you've done it yourself you've got nothing else to add to it you're, you're satisfied with it at least you should be anyway to me I go in and I do my job it might be boring, and it is boring and most, most of the day, 90% of the day it is boring, but it's because the people I work with that I do get some satisfaction out of my That's work. That's a consolation, not a satisfaction. Well, well, I gave up a good job to get where I am now. I've been in working on the shop floor for now two years. Well, I could have been in a suit, a tie, and been on the road, you know, as a representative, in a commission and everything. But with being young, seeing your own mates spreading the money around, you know, you feel out in the cold, so I said, I'll better myself and be on the same level as them. But I, that was the biggest mistake I ever made. I think people leaving school now, they are, uh, they are trapped to some extent into the uh, type of job which pays a high, uh, high uh, wage, the type of job which I'm employed in. Unfortunately, I have to be employed in because I'm a married man and, and money means a lot to me. But I think a lad leaving school, or a girl leaving school, before he's, he's tempted by these high wage offers, should really and seriously consider this question of uh, satisfaction from his work. A fellow does need a better job, more secure, like, study more at school, like, because they've got a family, but a girl doesn't, does she? She needs the money now while she's young. But why not consider the adventurous like oh, a boy? Yeah. But I mean, more so for a boy. Girls get married for 21, 22, and it, unless they want to work, they don't have to. But we've got to work for the next, well, I've got to work for the next 50 years. They're over there, they're all right, they haven't got where to go. <laughs> but uh, I've got to work for my own security for later in life, and if I get married, for my wife as well. So you're working? I'm working for when I get married and for the rest of my life. Would anyone disagree what the definition of work is? That work in its definition must be if man works, he sets his hands to something in order to combat nature and survive. But is no. this work? No, no. Well, is work merely something that's full of avarice to make something out of somebody else or to work for yourself, for your comforts and so on? He didn't discover a wheel to make money out of it. He discovered a wheel because it would help his aching back because he had to drag something flat. Why didn't he, he tell you? And he why done that. Why didn't he invent a the on his back, back. Yeah, but in a moment, I mean, we can't answer everything at once. That come later. The back, the saw back didn't come till the bosses come. Well, a lot of people today cri criticise our younger generation because they're slovenly and lazy. Well, maybe it's just because at your age you never had the sense to do what they're doing now. They hate, they, they know they're going to hate it before they start, so people like hippies don't start it. You're a slave to work. They're a slave to nobody, only themselves, so they're free. Uh, I, I've got a lot of sympathy for them people. I think those people have seen the light, but unfortunately, they don't know what to do about it. Uh, it's no use dropping out. Coming back to what Peter and Mick's been talking about, we have got the answer, and we've got to do something about it. But we've got to learn, and we've got to educate ourselves to what we should do about it. Because work, really, all boils down to the, to the one thing, this fight against the elements or the you know, whatever you want to call it, for the betterment of...